The Foster Farms Temporary Restraining Order and Corona-19 versus Merced County. Greetings everyone, this is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, just trying to keep the community informed and local government as transparent as possible. And I've been documenting the COVID-19 outbreak since it began. If you like what I do here, please share these videos and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Many of us have heard about the temporary restraining order that was issued against Foster Farms. Now let's take a look at some of the details. After that, we'll take a look at some COVID-19 statistics as of January 1st, 2021. First, the union states that the safety obligations would not require Foster Farms to shutter the plant, rather that they could slow the line speed to ensure proper physical distancing between workers. Other protocols included, number one, and I'm sure they meant this to read, placing production line workers in any and all Livingston plant buildings no less than six feet from each other during shifts, including, but not limited to, the live hanger lines in plants one and two, production lines in deli, and production lines in packing. Erecting and or replacing existing dividers with sufficiently sized plastic dividers to protect production line workers when they've been forward over the production lines, including but not limited to in packing and with sufficiently durable plastic dividers that neither move nor tear, including but not limited to in deli. Ensuring and enforcing reasonably safe physical distances of at least six feet between workers in all work, clock in, clock out, and break areas, including by adequately staffing these areas to provide enough company monitors to supervise multiple areas, including bathrooms, break rooms, and hallways. Providing workers with and when necessary replacing adequate and sufficient face masks, face shields, and other necessary personal protective equipment to workers at company expense. Replacing face masks on demand at company expense. Requiring, instructing, and enforcing managers, supervisors, four persons, and employees that all workers must stay home from work when they are experiencing COVID-19 symptoms, have tested positive for COVID-19, or have come in close contact with another person or persons who have tested positive for COVID-19. Verbally and in writing, informing and workers of the availability of paid sick leave due to COVID-19, other applicable law, and pay employees sick pay for self-quarantining in accordance with such law. Conducting contact tracing of all persons known or suspected to have been infected with COVID-19 while physically present at the plant. Effectively, verbally and in writing, and regularly notifying all employees and their representatives when there is a reported illness or exposure in the plant. Restricting passenger capacity in Foster Farms transport vans to a number sufficient to allow six feet social distancing during transport and require use of face masks or coverings during such transportation and Monitoring and enforcing use of masks while inside transport vans. I have a few questions about how these are going to work in practice, but for now, let's go through some of the COVID-19 statistics as of January 1st. We'll begin with a look back to Friday, December 18th, 2020. The positivity rate was 13.9%, active cases at 3,135, and the deaths at 216. By the Wednesday before Christmas, the positivity rate had increased to 13.1%, active cases to 3,727, and deaths to 232. By New Year's Eve, the positivity rate dipped a little to 12.2, active cases increased to 3,633, and deaths increased to 260. Here we can see that the second wave is already much higher than it was in August, although it has dipped just slightly. The death rate is currently at 1.34%. In Livingston, as of January 1st, there were 1,572 total positive cases reported over the outbreak. And in this graph, it shows how many new cases were added to the total each week for the period beginning June 26 and ending January 1st. The height of each bar here shows how many new cases were added each week. Here you can see what it looks like for Merced, Los Banos, Atwater, and Winton. Delhi, Gustine, and Hillmar. 
Dos Palos, and La Gran Planada. As I mentioned a little earlier, I have a few questions about the restraining order against foster farms and how it would work out in practice. For example, like here, placing workers not less than six feet apart. If they do that, won't that mean they'll need less people in the plant? And how many people would get laid off, I wonder? Number three seems to indicate there's been a problem keeping people apart during clocking in, clocking out, and in the break areas. I wonder how cooperative everyone's going to be on enforcing this, and what will the company do if people refuse to comply? I wonder what kind of procedures would be in place in case an employee who meets any of these criteria decides they don't want to stay home from work. How many people usually fit in a transport van? I mean, like before the restraining order was in place and how many would fit afterwards? Will the company buy larger vans or just tell people they need to provide their own transportation to work? Those are just a few of the things I'm puzzling over, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments. If you're subscribed to the channel already, you might want to check and make sure you're still subscribed so you're notified whenever a new video goes live. And subscribe if you're new. Until next time, this is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, because not every critter is hiding under a rock.